to Buys by Alicia, the lifestyle show that helps women 40 plus with lifestyle tips to enjoy their 40s to the max through education, conversations, and inspiring interviews. I designed this podcast to empower all of us to be so inspirational that other people crave our vibes. Welcome back to the show. I am so excited to be including some powerful women on this episode. March is all about women's international. It is about women's history. And I'm excited to be sharing two women that I just recently met, but I've been following for a while, I think at least a year on social. And it's funny how we end up meeting people on social like, oh my God, I know everything about you from social media. (laughs) Um, So welcome to the podcast, ladies. You are, you know, for me, an inspiration, Natalie D'Onofrio. Yes. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you Fantastic. Did. And also, um, I have your name here somewhere and I can't find it now. Candice. 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 Um, so I've been following you all for a while. Thank you. And I have it here, Candice Kerr, your co-owner, social media management, brand strategist and designer. And uh, Natalie, you're a branding photographer. Yes. And videographer. And videographer. So you do video as well. Yes, ma'am. And the reason why I met you and the way that I met you ladies and how I connected with you was because last week I attended the 100, I think it's the 100 plus women of Cypher. Yep. Out in uh, Cyprus. Of Cyprus, right, of Cyprus, 100, one hour, $100 each, and there's, it's an, it's like a collective, it's a collective giving. They raise money um, every quarter, and you get to nominate a charity you want to donate to, Yeah, and then that charity is basically nominated, you vote, and they get all the funds from the the donations, which is awesome. And And it was your first time and our first time as well, we had never been either. So how did you find out about this event? Some of our friends run it, and um, okay. they, they invited us, and then obviously social media, we're all over social media all the time, and yeah. so it popped up, and we're like, yeah. let's be there. Let's go. Yeah, you know, and I was actually there because I met Giovanna yes. Burgess, and we met at a valet line at a event the week before. Yeah. And I had been following her. She looked very familiar, but we were in line waiting to pay for a valet to get out of the hotel, the Hilton Hotel. And I looked at her and she looks very familiar, but we started talking and she started inviting me to things. I'm like, oh my God, I'm already following you because you do a podcast. She does a podcast too. So um, it's amazing how Houston has all these little connections and people, right? Yeah. And uh, find each other little by little because then when I met you at the event I'm like I've been to your event I went to your launch yeah which was crazy crazy. yeah (laughs) it is crazy that was amazing and full circle it is it is a full circle so I'm so grateful to have you in here today because you know this is an important month and I think it's not just March but I think it's important that we share local business women and and you know typically people go big and they're like oh I don't want to you know I'm done with like doing local but local is where it's at I believe that we do I mean we we are very passionate about when we bring on clients. One of the first thing is we're tapping into your local market. We're not going to go and look for people internationally on your social media or in your branding who are not going to follow you and become your loyal fans and your customers. Um, we are very much about local, building the local network, building your tribe and finding your tribe. Mm-hmm. Because entrepreneurship, it's tough. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. You, need, you need to find your tribe and you need to definitely support them and also rely on them which Mm -hmm. is really really important so how did you both come together or tell me just first of all a little bit about jnc and what that stands for so jnc kind of came together because we were all doing our own things and realizing that there was such a disconnect between um communication between the branding so you find your logo and you go over here and you get your logo right and you go over here and you get your website and then you go over here and you get your branding and none of it or your photography and none of it was communicating with each other none Mm -hmm. of it was cohesive it was having this tone over here and this tone over here and this tone over here yeah and so we came together and the three of us at the beginning the last year has been the three of us and um we came together and really just wanted to bridge that that disconnect, be able to bring branding and allow it to have a cohesive voice across the board. Okay. And the last year, I mean, it was, it was insane. Um, it's, it was been, a lot. It's, it's been, it's been a lot. And it was um, so much learning, but so much amazingness. Like we were able to look back and see from start to finish mm-hmm. brands that we came together and built that were just 
stunning and that were scroll stopping and that were allowing people to really understand who they are, what they do and who they serve quickly. Because nowadays the, the, the market, you get two seconds, right? Like for somebody to decide, I, I like know. you yeah. or I don't. Two I'm seconds, isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Just so much to form an opinion on you. Yes. And that's yeah. what they're doing. I mean, it takes two seconds. And when they say first impressions matter, they really, really oh do. Gosh. It's right? so, And it's so big now that, um, you know, society has such a short, I was at a, a, just a quick story. I was at a track meet this last weekend mm-hmm. and there was five, four by one, a f- a five, 400 races. The first one, everybody was so like, wow. Yeah. Second one, everybody was like, whoa. Uh-huh. The third one, everybody just had their phone and the poor kids are running and nobody's even looking anymore. And it just was a testament to how short of our the span, attention span. Our, mm-hmm. our attention spans are like this big. So it has to be cohesive. It has to be strong. And it has to really jump off the page at you when it comes to branding, your photography, your right. website. And it all has to be the same. And it's so important because it brings credibility to that person. Mm -hmm. I know when I look on Instagram and I look somebody that's like all over the place, I completely, you know, dismiss them. Yeah. I really don't take them seriously. But if I see someone who's got like a really uniform Instagram or has like ideas or has a a great format or something that looks like you're putting effort into it and actually doing something that's that's uh, unique and different and special then I'm paying attention. Brand credibility. Yeah. It yeah. is. It yeah. is. It makes a difference. And if you've spent money, you've invested on your product, on yourself, you can see that. Yeah. And yeah. when you don't <laughs> and you get things and there's there's no right. there's no making fun of anybody that's on Etsy getting their, their first logo. And there's no making fun yeah. of anybody that's doing what they can with where they are in their journey. Right. But there's the difference between those people that know I need to spend this money here yeah. to be able to be taken serious. Yeah. Absolutely. So Candace. We, I like to think of social media as pretty much a networking event. You go on social media to network. You go to meet people, to build your community, to find mm-hmm. your tribe. Mm-hmm. And quite often, that's not how people are showing up. Mm-hmm. Would you show up? at a networking event with a selfie in your car. No, you wouldn't. You would want to show up in your heels, in your blazer, you're looking all smart. Yes. So that's really a large part. And funny enough, you asked how we met. We met at a networking group. Oh, you did? Okay. That's how we initially met, at a networking group. And a lot of my clients were, I needed photography, so I used to hand them to Natalie and vice versa. She didn't do social media. She passed them on to myself. And yeah. that's where we found each other. And it's kind of continued. We continue to network. We net- met you at a networking event. Yeah. And... I was a stay-at-home mom for seven, no, for 11 years before I started JNC and started my own company before JNC. And without networking events, I don't think I'd be here today. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's, it's important. It's huge. Yes. And finding the right networking event, you know, it's That's really intimidating also true. to go to an, a room full of women, mm-hmm. not knowing anyone, and mm-hmm. to walk in the door. <laughs> there's a bravery that happens. There's a courage that has to be in there. There's a confidence in that woman to walk in. You know, knowing I'm going to meet somebody, I'm going to just sit down and, and, and get to know people. I do that a lot. I go to a lot of networking events by myself and I don't take a friend with me for the sole purpose <laughs> that I'm not going to be stuck to my friend. I'm going to make myself, mm-hmm. I'm going to force myself to meet other people. And when I sat down with you two that day, Giovanna brought me straight up with y'all because she felt like as a hostess, she had that ability to say, okay, I know who to put people with. Yes. She's great at connecting And people. that's amazing. Oh my gosh. Is that a is a skill set that I have not seen in a lot of yeah leaders yes and she just and she's good at it she is she's really good yeah. she's a connector she connects with everyone but you know taking that first step going to my networking event mm-hmm. i'm not the same person i was a year yeah. ago no. going to the networking yeah, event of course yeah um and also networking events always look at them because you can outgrow a networking event you know the events and the circles that you're in now you can show you can true be comfortable and you can grow it doesn't mean that when you leave them, you don't have to nourish those, but you do have to expand. You cannot mm-hmm. stay in this group and stay in this networking group and think that, well, this is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. If that's your comfort zone, I encourage you to step out and go to... Yeah, if it's gotten comfortable. Go to rooms where, yeah. guess what? Right. You mm-hmm. are uncomfortable again because mm-hmm. you have to continue to grow. And that personally is where I'm at. I still go to those networking groups where I did a year ago, mm-hmm. but I'm also looking for new networking groups. Yes. Where I can go into the room and feel like, a, you know... 
a little fish in a big pond. Right. Not know everybody and not be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's something that you have to force yourself to do. I know a lot of women who say, I would never go by myself. I couldn't do that. But I think it's important that you do it because otherwise we're stuck with the person next to us or, or the person we brought with us. And we already know that person. We're not getting to know anyone new because we're so accustomed and so used to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is what made you guys click together? Like what happened in that first conversation that you thought, oh, we can definitely go into business together? So for me, um, Natalie did a photo shoot for my personal brand first. So okay. I rocked up to the, I didn't know Natalie. I knew her like briefly, but didn't know. Rocked up at a photo shoot. And it's the first photo shoot I have ever done where it's only me. Okay. I've spent many years doing family photo shoots. And you know what that's like. You mm. plan the kids' outfits. You plan your husband's outfit. You speak to yeah, the yeah, yeah. And then on the day, you're like, oh, goodness, I don't have anything to wear. Oh, I'll just yeah. wear something in my wardrobe. And you always come last. So that photo shoot, I had to show up. And from the initial go with Natalie, she made me feel comfortable. She was like, you have to choose outfits. I'm like, what? Outfits just for, for me? No no one else? I don't okay. know. <laughs> <Dude, laughs> that's like, about me? It's about me. Yes. And showing up in front of the camera, I was extremely uncomfortable. But within 20 minutes, she made me feel so comfortable. And then I saw her work. And I just knew the connection that we had. You know, she was spoke truthfully to me. She told me what I needed to do, what I didn't need to do. Yes. And I think that's definitely where I was like, you know, when you just find your person. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, well, I know I found my person that day. Mm-hmm. And then I was kind of like, okay, well, now can you do a family photo shoot? And <laughs> yeah. Then, can and you throw marshmallows <laughs> at each other? Yeah. And just, yeah. You just know when you meet that person that you're so comfortable with. Yes. Um, and then Natalie was actually partnered with another person at that time. And I came on as a freelancer. Okay. So I freelanced for a little while. We worked really, really well together. And then they were, wanted to offer me a full-time position. Um, I'm a very headstrong person. And I knew mm-hmm. that I did not want to be an employee Mm -hmm. I wanted to have as much skin in the game you want to be a a partner basically Mm -hmm. I arrived at the meeting and I was like okay so I'm honored I love the opportunity but here's the bit I was as much skin as the game I want to be a partner I'm not coming in as an employee yeah um Natalie straight away was like yes yes okay yes perfect (laughs) and I could see you know like the wheels turning and from there we just connect Mm -hmm. she calls me out of my bullshit gonna be honest (laughs) yeah she tell me my transition from being a stay-at-home mom right. to where I am now has not been has been challenging. My husband had to learn my whole family. No, it is. It's a whole, huge transition. So tell me about your kids. How old are they? So I have a nine-year-old son, Findlay. Okay. I have a six-year-old daughter, Harper. And then I have a husband whose career came first for 11 years. Yeah. I traveled the world with him. We mm-hmm. upped and moved every two years. Mm-hmm. So when I was like, okay, I'm starting a job. My kindergarten's gone to school. I'm starting a career. He had to catch up. There, was, yeah, there were yeah, moments yeah. where I used to come to Natalie and I used to moan. I'm like, he's not doing this and he's not doing that. And does yeah. he not see the dishwasher? What is this? And, <laughs> and she was like, you need to give him a moment to catch up. You, you're you ahead of the game. You already know right. where you're going in your career. And very you're, wise. Yes. It's a very good so advice. Not the advice I wanted at the time, I'm mm-hmm. going to be honest. No, yeah, but it's, it's what you needed to hear. <laughs> well, it, yeah. I didn't think at the time. I was like, right. you're supposed to be my friend and my business partner. Why is to care for my husband? Yeah. But she was right. I needed to yeah. take a step yeah. back and yeah. let everyone else catch up. So she calls me out on my bullshit. She tells me the things that I don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. And it's very rare that I've had people in my life that love me no matter what, but at the same time, tell me what I don't want to hear. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing about a friendship or a relationship is that you don't always have to get what you want to hear. You always have to get what you need to hear. And it's sometimes hard to get, right? It's hard to to understand, but it's important Mm -hmm. in order for that relationship to grow and for trust to be there. Because if that person is willing to tell you exactly how she sees things, then you're going to trust her to say, you know what, when something isn't right, this is where we can both come in and like fix it, right? So. I want you to meet my favorite bilingual realtor, Elmer Garcia. You all know that a passion of mine is real estate investing, and having a great realtor by your side is essential. Elmer knows the city of Houston like the back of his hand, and not only is he highly regarded by his clients, but also by the professionals in his field. I can tell you from experience that he is attentive, trustworthy, thorough and detail oriented. He knows what I like y'all and seeks out opportunities for finding the right property for me. His services range from residential real estate to commercial and investment. 
He will guide you the entire way. I can tell you that. You can email him at elmerg.realtor at gmail.com or call him at 832-512-5752. Or you can also find him on Instagram, Elmer Garcia underscore real estate. And don't forget, anything real estate is his forte. Okay, I'm going to talk about work ethic in a minute because that is a huge, huge thing. And we just talked about a little bit about that with the younger generations. Natalie, so why did you connect with Candace? How did y'all connect? So I had a vision. I have I have a lot of visions. <laughs> <laughs> what is your zodiac yeah, sign? Because I hear you. Scorpio. Like a, oh, yes, a yes. You're a water sign. I sit on yes. this cusp of Scorpio, Scorpio Sagittarius. Uh-huh. So I definitely have both mm-hmm. of those, mm-hmm. which makes like it You're pretty... like a visionary in Scorpio. Oh, my gosh. Visionaries, yeah. So Candace has been, over the year, the person that can take what's inside of my brain Mm -hmm. and put it on paper Mm -hmm. and to go through your whole life not being able to like really get it out and onto paper has been difficult and so she's been a piece to my puzzle that has been missing for a a really long time I'm 30 I'm 35 (laughs) (laughs) but seriously and so you know for me she did come on as a contractor and we had a bunch of different employees that we hired we had this amazing dream and Mm -hmm. this huge Mm -hmm. vision for what JNC was going to be. And, um, again, I had all these ideas, but they had to come out of my brain and they had Mm -hmm. to be actually done Mm -hmm. in the midst of me having a baby. Yeah. So I was pregnant the month that we actually launched (laughs) JNC from the very Mm -hmm. beginning, which is crazy in and of itself. So Candace came in and her work ethic and her vision just was like, it was crazy because you don't find that very often nowadays, especially when you're looking for someone to come on Mm -hmm. and you trust with your baby, Mm -hmm. with your business. And um, so taking a step back and looking at just what work ethic she brought, the vision she brought, the ability to create that she brought, but also being able to have the um, realistic side of things where she's like, okay, that's great. Like you can stay in the clouds Mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay down here. But every once in a while she tugs me down and she's like, Hey, Right. Come on back down to earth. Let's talk about how we're actually going to put this into <laughs> to a plan yeah. rather than just a dream. Well, somebody has to execute, right? Yeah. Because I think in, in when you go to networking events, you talk to women or people, not just women, but anyone with dreams. They want to do this. They want to do that. But nothing ever gets done mm-hmm. because they never execute. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about having a partnership is there's always someone that's executing on that idea. Yeah. Like there's an idea. OK, there's an idea. It's a wonderful idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. But unless somebody actually puts it into motion. Yes. And implements it. Yes. There's not there's that idea is worthless. And I look at it kind of like a chessboard where if I'm thinking I'm like, okay, the queen and the king are all the way over there. And how could I okay, if I use this and Candace is over here, like building Mm -hmm. the board as well, Mm -hmm. where she's like, I'm behind you. What else do you have? And we're kind of working at the same time. We've looked at each other a few times and been like, We've never really Mm -hmm. needed to have a um, very strong marketing plan for ourselves because we're just we're always ahead of the game. And she's Mm -hmm. always working right behind me like, oh, my gosh, this girl and her dreams. Okay, here I am. Mm -hmm. I'm waxing Mm -hmm. on and waxing Mm -hmm. off and I'm throwing (laughs) ideas back at her. And she's like, that's a bad one. (laughs) She's dodging and weaving some of my crazy dreams. But it has when we're functioning at 100 percent in our best selves. We are, I mean, unstoppable, uh, unstoppable. Yeah. And there's a synergy. Oh, right. There's a synergy because it's it's one thing doing something by yourself. And there's something when you're doing it with somebody that's partnering up with Mm -hmm. you. And 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 I think, honestly, it kind of takes you quicker and faster because there's two people that are at it unless there's um there's 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 contention yeah. mm-hmm. then that's difficult and nothing ever happens but and if don't get us wrong there has been mm-hmm. times mm-hmm. where contention oh, we fight like sisters <laughs> yeah. we, we fight oh my gosh. what are some of those items that you butt heads like what is it like what is that one thing that you I, constantly have I'm like, disagree- I'll let dis- go first. disagreements <laughs> on <laughs> probably, probably say communication yeah I would probably say that you know as women sometimes we when we speak, we mean something, but it's received in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I'll be coming across not meaning anything, but having a conversation and it might be interpreted differently. I'm mm-hmm. also not American. So the way I speak sometimes is different. Where are you from? I'm from South Africa, okay. um, but I spent the last 20 odd years traveling the world. So I, I don't mm-hmm. know what I sound like. Apparently mm-hmm. I still sound South African, <laughs> but I would say communication in terms of, you know, sometimes 
just your intention, you're not communicating that properly from the beginning. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest things. And also just making sure that we both have what we feel is equal level of work. Because mm-hmm. quite often you can get bogged down in, well, I think I'm working more than you and I think I'm working. And yes. that can't be the case. You know, sometimes Natalie's workload might be heavier than mine, but then that's my time to say, hey, Natalie, how can I support you right now? Right. And vice versa. Um, so I would say definitely communication is one of the biggest things. And also the, the 101 ideas sometimes are triggering for me because I see a to-do list. Yeah. Um, and at that time, I need to then just have an honest conversation with them and go, I love this idea, but right, right. now, I need to work on the other 100 mm-hmm. ideas you've mm-hmm. given me. Mm-hmm. And once I complete those, I can then move on to 101 idea. Right. Um, so that is probably, I would say, but again, it's, we are, we I love language transparency. And we I was about to say grace and transparency. transparency. Yeah. Grace and transparency, it's I think, is what we've gotten, what has gotten us through the last year and still loving each other through through mm-hmm. all of our stuff. And we can look at each other and be like, hey, I really just need a break from you because you're getting on my nerves. Mm-hmm. And she'll be like, yeah, mm-hmm. you're getting on my nerves too. And then we walk <laughs> away and we're totally fine when we come back where there's not a lot of women <laughs> that, that can be like, yeah, I need a break. Yeah. No, not only that, but they take it very personal. Exactly. And we don't. We yeah, like water water off a duck's back is what I always say. It's just. But it sounds to rolling. me like you both put the business first oh, before you put yourselves oh, in sure. terms of oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's what it sounds like yeah. because you say, well, well, how is this going to help our our business? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And I mean, something that we're working on is boundaries. Yeah. We're both realizing Natalie has, you know, a 15-year-old, an 11-year-old, year and, old, and a 1-year-old. One one year old. Mm-hmm. I have a 9 and a 6-year-old. Mm-hmm. That is busy. And, you know, it's yes. so, it's, you can so easily get lost in entrepreneurship and doing the day-to-day things. So your easy. Family, your family sacrifices. And, you know, at yeah. the side. So this is something last year um, we did not have something called balance. This year, my personal word is balance, and that's to find the balance. I mean, Natalie, this weekend, she didn't work half as much as she normally does. And I was so proud of her. I was like, <laughs> I am so proud of you for taking some time to yourself. The weekend before, I took more time to myself. And it's respecting getting those boundaries, sitting yeah. down, and also yeah. discussing boundaries that are changing. Every day they're changing. I mean, I was just I was thinking today when I sent you a message, I'm like, let's discuss what's happening over the summer. I have two children that are home for summer. What is happening? Mm-hmm. And that is a conversation. I know that I can go to Natalie and say, this is what my summer looks like. I have no support with my kids. What are we doing? Yeah. yeah but yeah. we'll sit together and we'll figure it out because mm-hmm. I know in four years' time when she's got Cameron running around and my kids are in teens, we're going to have the same conversation, but it's going to be totally flipped. It is. It is going to be totally different. Yeah. yeah. And like for me, when I started my own business and when I started my own thing, my husband had already been growing on his own for 15, 16 years. So it was my turn, right? And my mm-hmm. kids were already in middle school. Yeah. So in order for me to be feeling like I could definitely focus on what I wanted to do, I needed my kids to be in a certain place. I needed for our, us yeah. as a couple to be in a certain place, right? Yeah. Because all of us are married. We all have our kids. We, we, we're, we're doing the momming. We're doing the wifing. We're doing the boss, yeah. right? And it's a lot. It is. It's a lot. And it's a lot of balance. So do you ladies confront the mom guilt a lot or do you find a way to manage it and say i'm not going to be guilty for like focusing on my business because this is what i love because i think it's oh what is it tell me it's all of it yeah Yeah. all of the above yeah (laughs) i mean mom guilt mom guilt is is a lot um we had the conversation as well that we have to work that when the kids come home from school Mm -hmm. we then need to start Getting our getting to a point where we're doing where that, we're doing yeah, that, where we can then say, okay, now the kids get up home from school at four until dinner time until they go to bed at eight. Those four hours we're going to dedicate. Are we there yet? No. Are we working towards it? Yes. Um, you know, it's it's tough, but it's also being partnered with someone and also speaking to your husband and just saying, hey, yes, you know, I need support here. Yes. And asking for help as females, I, I don't know what it is, but we do not ask for help enough. Well, we and feel I feel like we have to do it all. It's communication again and transparency because while her and I's jobs cross so mm-hmm. much and she's such a backbone to photography and videography, even if she doesn't have an actual camera in her mm-hmm. hands, mm-hmm. the support is still there. And so there's there's been in this this year, the last few months of like, hey, I can't be there for this one. You got to go take care of this one or I'm going to be here for this one. It yeah. makes sense for me, like just really being open and communicative on what makes sense for our business, what makes sense for our kids, what makes sense for our lives. So, you know, for me, finding that block scheduling, I know everybody says it and it's so cliche, block scheduling is going to save my life. And I've already started to implement it where it's like, when when an email comes through, Mm -hmm. 
it's not heart surgery. I'm not saving a life by answering this email. If mm-hmm. anything, I'm doing myself a disservice because I'm halfway looking at this and halfway editing a photo right, right, or halfway mm-hmm. editing a video or halfway doing whatever I am doing in that moment that I then took two seconds to, to start doing this. And then it takes me 10 seconds to get back in the headspace for this. Yeah. To so, refocus on what you were yeah. doing. Yeah. 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 But I think it's a it's a problem that we have as as women who are very driven, very ambitious. We want our businesses to succeed. Mm -hmm. And we have this feeling like I have the feeling when that email comes through, if I don't answer Mm -hmm. it, that person's going to think I'm not on top of my shit. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, thinking about the business because I'm taking my time answering that message. And I'm I'm on that message. Yeah. I mean, my head is is it is telling me all of the, these different stories, yeah. right? And so I'm constantly having to really like refocus my mind and say, okay, I'm just going to use this time for answering messages. Yes. But it's hard because it for hard. there's there's the pressure those of that us, you feel on your shoulders and your right, back. That so I respond. feel that I'm not responding and I'm not being on top of things. Like yeah. I respond to messages even when I'm on tr- when I'm travel vacation yeah. because I am just like yeah. obsessed with like, okay, I need to make sure that they know that I'm on it. I got it. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Well, it's hard nowadays. It comes on your laptop. It does. Laptop. It comes to your, your phone watch. on your watch. I don't even wear my yeah. watch anymore. <laughs> I had to take the watch off. I know. I mean, back to the mom guilt, I think. Mine is a little different because I was I stayed home for 11 years. So I had really good quality time with my kids, which I know a lot of people are not right. fortunate enough to have. But I also want to change the narrative for my daughter and show her that I am an independent woman, that I can work, that I can show her what it is to have a successful career, own your own business. Right. So I'm trying to shift that narrative in my household that, you know, like, my kids still, they struggle. They still think yes. sometimes that I think I'm playing with Play-Doh during the day while they're at school. <laughs> like they still just don't understand the concept. They would never interrupt daddy's meeting, but they, they, they feel nothing to come and interrupt my meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're also trying to build those boundaries with them so that they know that what mommy does is just as important as what daddy does. Um, and also just to show them that I am, you know, working and that I, I they are very important to me. Mm-hmm. But what I do for myself is also really important. Yes. Um, yes, it's important. And and studies show that moms who work and they're the, the, the young ladies that grow up with mothers who work, they, they grow up to feel a sense of self, of purpose, of confidence. And yeah. they also learn what kind of person to marry that's mm-hmm. going to be so supportive of their own goals and like there's nothing wrong with setting that yeah I used to be the type that whenever I had problems at work I would just lock myself in the house and just cry it out mm-hmm. right but my kids always knew that I was crying they knew I was upset about something and I never wanted to tell them but I changed that because I was like I, th- I need them to know that I'm going through some really tough times right now and I would say exactly what was happening in my business they were 50 they were in you know they're my kids are 20 and 15 so they were older they could understand that but I wanted them to know you know what I am struggling with something and I'm not okay with it and I'm crying about it because it's upsetting me instead of hiding it. I feel like that's so important what you just said because what happens in our own brain, I don't think that we translate to happening in our kid's brain where your kids probably went to the worst case scenario in their they brain. Did. And, yeah. and and if you can just debunk it by being mm-hmm. like, okay, listen, this is what's going on. This mm-hmm. is how I'm going to fix mm-hmm. it. One, you're going to calm yourself down because majority of the time what we're upset about, come on, it's it, not. It is. It's, yeah, not you're serious. right. Uh-huh. And then two, being able to just relax them, talk them through it so that they can come back from this traumatic thing that they're creating in their own mind. It's so powerful. You're right because automatically they, they start to ask, are you and daddy like, and greet each other. Like, yeah. that's the first thing when they see me upset or crying. And, yeah. it, and that was important for me to be like, no, 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 it has nothing to do with dad. Yeah. It's me. I'm just not doing well at work. I'm yeah. just not, I'm, you know, I'm struggling with something. And then just being really honest with them about it, that now when they see me, they say, mom, how's, how's it going? Like, what what's going on? Yeah. Like, they can you, support they you because now they know me. you. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to open up a little bit more mm-hmm. about that. And my kids know me so well. And I think it's a generational thing. I think our parents, I know I never heard from my parents, you know, oh, that yeah. sort of thing but I think it's it's great that our kids and they say don't share too much with your kids but but if I don't share enough then they're creating the worst case yes, scenario yeah. in their head and yeah. that's not good for them either mm-hmm. yeah. and what what's better like giving your kids a little bit of your insight mm-hmm. and knowing that I'm struggling and then my job isn't as amazing as, as everybody thinks it is because I'm struggling a lot well I think that we forget to to even look at the fact that the world is progressing and where our kids are learning it used to be they learn from us and they learn from the tv now they learn from us, the TV, the phone, the social media, like all of these different accesses to our children. So much. That maybe our parents didn't have to necessarily talk us through the things that we were going through. Mm-hmm. But now we do because they're learning an 
at the opposite side too quickly or seeing all these different outside things coming in that they don't know what the heck they're doing. And so before, yeah, so you, did, you didn't need to discuss everything with your children, maybe. I mean, my yeah. parents probably messed me up. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> that messed me up a little bit in regards to the things that they did or did not discuss with yeah. us or disclose to us. But nowadays, it's just different. You have to handle it differently. And I think that that women intuition is so important that sometimes we don't use it. So important. We, we don't follow it because we second guess ourselves. But I think those first knee jerk reactions have to be what we do is like, hey, this is what's going on. I'm going to talk you through this because you want to be a grown up. All of our kids want to grow up fast. Yeah. We know it's a trap. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Slow down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all of our mm -hmm. kids want to grow up so quick that we're like, okay, if you want to be growing up, you want to understand this. I'm going to talk you through it. What yeah. are your questions? Now I can answer. Yeah. Not social media. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's, that's the important part is I have the answers for you mm -hmm. yeah. because they will go to social media. They're on TikTok all day and they're oh, like yeah. getting so much info on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of boys are on YouTube and a lot of the things that you have to monitor for them mm -hmm. is on YouTube and you so I'm always asking questions too. Like, what are you watching? Or I'll go and I'll look it up and mm -hmm. stuff. But.